Hi everybody, it's been a while. I've been so busy with my <clears throat> modeling career, you know, 56 years old, slightly over the normal weight of a man my age. Okay, let's say more than slightly. Uh, but, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and I'm full of crap. I'm just making this shit up. Um, today we're going to talk about transposition of the great vessels, or great arteries. Sometimes you'll see TGV, sometimes you'll see TGA, and there's a few other abbreviations for it. Um, TGA is the one that I'm probably most familiar with. It, God knows they change the terms and the names so often it's ridiculous. So uh, let's go with that as what I'm talking about today. So um, transposition of the great arteries is, transposition means switched or, you know, uh, attached to a different area than they should be. Great, obviously, is the big and the arteries. So this is the big arteries, which would be the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So let's take a look at some images of what transposition of the great artery looks like. Great artery. Okay, first thing I want to do is give my appreciation to the Mayo Clinic, who always has the greatest drawings of congenital heart defects and adult defects, adult problems. Um, whoever their artist is, is beyond talented. Um, they're always well put together and just exactly the way you need for explaining things. So, thank you Mayo Clinic. I wish I could pay you whatever you want for your copyrights, but I'm a poor echo tech and uh, it's hard for me to do. So anyways, um, here's a visualization of the normal heart, which is right about here, as we see. So you have the, let me make this a little smaller. So you have the left ventricle. So you have the right vent or left atrium. So the blood comes in normally like this and out through the aorta going underneath the pulmonary artery and down, right, to the rest of the body. So that's a normal flow. And then, of course, on the right side, you have the right atrium, the right ventricle, and then the flow going into the pulmonary artery and then to the branches of the pulmonary artery and that's normal flow. That's what you're supposed to see. Now occasionally you're going to get surprised and I don't like surprises when I'm doing congenital um, heart defects but it does happen so this is what transposition of the great vessels looks like. So instead of the aorta coming off of the um, left ventricle it comes off the right ventricle and instead of the pulmonary artery coming off the right ventricle, it comes off the left ventricle. Now, this is a significant defect. This is one of the ones that you want to get on the phone immediately with the pulmonary, or I'm sorry, with the peds cardiologist. This can be life or death because sometimes the only shunting of blood can be a small atrial septal defect and a PDA. So you need to make sure that those stay open and uh, the child can survive with mixing of blood. Sometimes they are born with a ventricular septal defect. Um, sometimes they're not. So it just depends upon the child and uh, what they're born with. Um, the key to this view, and I'll draw this out for you in just a second, is when you... Sorry. Let me, let me draw it out for you, okay? Okay, so this is a very poorly drawn subcostal view. And this is a normal view that we see subcostally. So you you know you would have the left ventricle here and the, the wall of the left ventricle. And the blood flow should be going, you know, through the mitral valve right here and into the left ventricle and up and around the aorta and down. So that's normal flow. That's what we should be seeing. I know, it's amazing that I'm not a professional artist. I suck at drawing, sorry. Um, so this will be a short axis, so let's make it look like it's on the echo machine. Um, and what you see here is 
a left ventricle down here and the quickest way to assess as to whether or not you're looking at transposition is to get this view which is just the general subcostal view now I showed you what normal looks like just a second ago now abnormal what you see if you look carefully and you angle anteriorly enough you will see the flow going to both pulmonary arteries now you know you have transposition so this is a significant problem usually you get a hint right away because things just don't look right you know, you know the, the arteries are coming off a little weird or something you, you just you get a feeling that something's not right plus the kid may have cyanosis and a few other things so if you look more anteriorly you'll see that this vessel is not an aorta it's a pulmonary artery so now we've got a problem we've got oxygenated blood going up the pulmonary artery and to the lungs that obviously is not what we want um, and then also you have deoxygenated blood going down the aorta to the rest of the body so this is a, a real problem because if you don't have mixing of blood somewhere let's say like right here where the atrial septum would be and then the PDA up here then you have no way of mixing blood and the child can get really cyanotic and once they start crying they could even pass out and even worse so remember this view because this is really what will tell you immediately as to whether or not you have transposition of the great arteries all right let's show you some pictures so here's a beautiful drawing much better than mine of what we're looking at when we see transposition of the great vessels now in a subcostal view this is not a subcostal view this is if you were looking directly in a ch into the chest cavity so if you're looking through the sternum and into the heart this is what you'd see so obviously you know you have a left atrium up on top there let me change here so the left atrium is here you get blood flow going down into the left ventricle and then instead of it going out the aorta, remember what I told you, it's going through a PA. So obviously that's a problem. Like I said, you're getting, de you're getting oxygenated blood going to the lungs, which is not how it's supposed to work. And uh, the only, you know, the right bend of the right atrium here, and hopefully this is an atrial septal defect, which is, you know, what you need to really mix blood well. Um, because... With a atrial septal defect and a PDA, the blood will mix. The child will still get low oxygenated blood, but it'll be high enough to sustain life. What will happen, though, is that when they feed, you'll notice that their lips get blue and that they may even have a bluer tinge down in the legs, and that's how you know that there's something going on. So um, here you can see the flow going through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle through what should be an aortic valve right and then all the way down the wrong way so it's a good example a nice picture of how this works and uh, I will show you later on there are different types of transposition I always found them very confusing and of little value to me as an echotech now it's important to show in the short axis view which one you're looking at for the surgeon. So you have to get a good view of it, of the short axis view at the valvular level to really show the docs. So I wanted to put two pictures together to show you one thing that's you wouldn't think about until the patient needs surgery. And uh, that's the fact that in a normal looking, you know, heart, they're not really showing you the coronary arteries so in in this picture you're not seeing the coronary arteries and where they are but in this picture you can see a drawing of the coronary arteries so here's the left coronary artery and then the right coronary artery comes out looks like they're putting it about here and then goes down the um, coronary arteries on a patient are in the aorta one of the operations we use most often is called a switch operation, which is where they they cut the aorta 
and put it where the PA is, and they cut the PA and put it where the aorta is. Sounds simple, right? Except they also have to cut these coronary arteries out, little patches of the coronary artery, so that the opening of the coronary artery is, is well set up so that we can transplant them onto the PA. Because remember, you're turning a PA into a aorta. Um, so what they do is, I'm sorry, you're turning a PA, a, a PA that is normally coming out of the RV, you're now turning, you're moving the aorta over to the LV and you're replanting those coronary arteries because they need to be moved. So it's interesting, but it's, it's hard to explain. I'm sorry if I screwed that up, but it's just a matter of how they do it. I'll, I think I have another one of it, so I'll show you. Okay, um, this is one of the things that used to bother the heck out of me when I was doing congenital defects. Um, they would always ask me, is it L-type transposition or is it D-type transposition? And I could never figure out which one was which because, I don't know, I had a brain block. It happens occasionally, especially if you got hit in the head as much as I did. I'm a six foot, two inch, about 300 pound ex uh, hockey player and football player. So a lot of head injuries, a lot of head injuries. So confusion is rampant in my brain. Um, anyhow... This is L-type, and that is when you see the pulmonary valve in the center where the aortic valve should be, right? So that's here. And just to the left and up is where the aortic valve is. So just the position is all they care about, where they are positioned in the heart. And that's how you get it is in the short axis view. As you can see, there's not the normal looking short axis view. You can get both openings of the pulmonary artery and of the aortic valve or the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve at the same time. Okay, now this is D type trans, uh, transposition of the great arteries. And as you can see, the, the only difference between L and D is where the positioning of the aorta is as compared to the PA. So if you're looking at it now, instead of in like L transposition where the aorta is over here, in D transposition the aorta is over to the right and uh, up above the PA. So it, from a surgeon's point of view, it's important to know because you want to know exactly where the two vessels are coming off because if you're going to do a switch procedure, which like I said is the most common, then you want to know where it is. Now there are times when they do another procedure, but it's it's not done as much anymore. It's called a mustard procedure, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, this is what a mustard procedure looks like, which is extremely confusing. Um, basically, you still have um, transposition, but what has happened is the bottom of the heart, the LV and the RV, are kind of switched, and it's mainly because when the heart's developing, if you look in embryology, which is also very confusing, but you need to know if you're going to do some congenital heart defects. Um, instead of the LV being where it normally is, which is over here on this side, um, the LV is over here. So the LV is going into the PA, and the RV is going into the aorta, but instead of it being transposed up in the arteries, it's transposed down in the ventricles. So what they do is they put in what's called a baffle. That's what this white area is here. And that baffle shunts blood underneath the valve, or underneath the valves, the aorta and the pulmonary and puts it through that and into the right atrium and then it goes down this way and through an LV with a patch through it and out the aorta. So what they've done is now made the blood that is normally going into the wrong chamber, the RV, by this baffle. It's like a tunnel. It goes underneath and it it's in the atriums, it goes underneath, produces its own kind of ASD by tunnel, via tunnel, 
and then goes into the correct chamber and then they this is a big surgery they correct the vessels up on top and now you've got the LV pumping out the aorta which is normal now what they usually do is they cut off the PA and they put in a conduit here which is uh, you know usually made a Dacron or some sort of plastic um, and then that goes in sewn into the pulmonary arteries and, and you've corrected the transposition but in a really complex way. I do not know how many of these are done anymore but I know that near the end of my career I saw less of these than I the switch was much more popular. But occasionally if you run into this where the chambers are on the wrong side this is your option so Okay, this is uh, the switch procedure, which, I, like I said, is most commonly used now. So, in this picture, you have uh, uh, views of kind of the outside of the heart, and then down here, the bottom right, you have a view of the internal part of the heart. And this is after everything is done, so um, the RV now has been sewn the vessels have been switched, so they just basically move the vessels to their correct position. They cut them at the correct area, which leaves a little bit, you know, leaves the pulmonary valve and leaves the aortic valve in its original position. And then they switch them. Um, sometimes they have to put a pericardial patch here. And uh, when they do that, you know, that's just to extend the PA. And then, like I said before, they have to replant the coronary arteries. So they do that, replant it, and you can see a good picture of that here, how they replant them. And the pericardial patch used to reconstruct the base of the new pulmonary artery where the coronary arteries used to be. That's shown here, too. So that's a good way of looking at it. Um, you can imagine what intricate type of sewing is required. These pediatric cardiologists who perform surgery um, are extremely talented and they do most of this under a microscope. It's incredible because they're doing it on a baby. And if you look at a baby's fist, you know, the heart is just a little bit bigger than that. So it's tough work. I don't envy them at all. All right, this has been a long enough video. I'm sorry for that, but this was a very complex one to explain. Again, the one thing I want you to remember is when you're in your short axis view, I'm sorry, in your subcostal view, sorry, I got that mixed up, you really want to angle anteriorly or up um, so that you get the shot of the LV here. And what you'll see is the PA. You'll see these branches coming off, and you'll realize this isn't right. Something is definitely wrong here. And that's, like I said, when you get on the phone, make sure you talk to the cardiologist. Make sure the cardiologist, the peds cardiologist, talks to the neonatologist so that they can give the child some medication that will keep the PDA open. And uh, hopefully, if the ASD is big enough, that'll help, too. If it's a small ASD, sometimes they have to go in and do what's called a balloon uh, septostomy. Sep I think that's what it's called, septostomy. They inflate a balloon. Let's say the aorta wasn't there. They inflate a balloon right through here. The catheter goes like this. And they basically rip that balloon right through to make a bigger ASD. And then when they go in to do the switch or whatever operation they're doing, they patch that ASD. But anyhow, that's uh, the end of this lecture. I'm sorry it was so long. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, we'll see you next time.